Houston's Town Center Mall has changed a lot since its ribbon cutting in 1983. In recent years, it has struggled. Stores are leaving and the mall is now for sale. Many are wondering what is next for the shopping center. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Kahn gives us a look at the impact the mall has had on our region in this Eyewitness News Investigates. Charleston Town Center is a monument to dreams and vision. Call it a tale of different decades, maybe of a different era. There's the Charleston Town Center of 1983 when it opened. A $100 million showpiece with a three-story waterfall and more than 130 tenants at its peak. Leaders hailed it as the largest downtown-based shopping mall east of the Mississippi River. Fast forward to Town Center of 2021. Three out of four anchor stores are gone. The mall at one point went into receivership and is now for sale. Walking through the mall recently, I counted more than 40 empty storefronts. Blocks of closures on the first and second floors, others on their way out. Occupying some storefronts, several non-retail tenants, such as the Kanawha County Library and the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame. Quite the contrast to that exciting start nearly four decades ago. Michael Barakas, owner of the Mediterranean restaurant Best of Crete, was there on opening day. It was great for us because people really didn't know what our food was all about. They were in the mall for nearly 30 years before moving to Charleston's west side in 2013. The mall is a great thing, uh, a lot of traffic back then anyhow. Today, not so much. Baraka says rent in the food court leading up to 2013 wasn't cheap, but it was affordable given the business they generated. Over the years, things changed. They decided to relocate for multiple reasons. At first they wanted to raise the rent, and I said, no, we brought in all these restaurants. You guys brought in several new restaurants. And I said, now you've, you've diced the pie up too many ways. So, you know, the, the sales aren't there for that. The town center's not alone in its struggles. West Virginia University marketing chair and professor Michael Walsh believes 25% of the roughly 1,200 malls in the country will not survive. It, it's a really tough um, situation because I think that it's, it's going to be very hard to somehow change consumer preferences and consumer shopping behavior. The fact is we like buying things online and I, 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 I can't see that changing anytime um, soon. I think that what I believe a lot of the shopping mall operators and the owners are are really struggling with is, you know, how to re reimagine the the shopping mall and the shopping mall experience and all. In this Google Maps image, the first public sign of the town center's distress came in 2001 when Montgomery Ward, one of the four anchor stores, closed, replaced six years later with Brick Street Insurance Company. In 2017, the second anchor store, Sears, closed. And in 2019, Macy's pulled out, leaving J.C. Penney as the lone anchor store today. On a cold winter day in January 2019, sold for $35 million. U.S. Bank National bought the mall at auction on the city's courthouse steps for $35 million, a third of its original value. The city's mayor then formed a mall task force to help with the transition of the struggling shopping complex. Its first and only public meeting was held February 4th of 2019. Two years later, the mall was put on the market for sale. One public meeting since between now and then, um, what has the mall task force accomplished during that time? What we did over the past two years, and especially the first year that we were here, uh, was participate in the negotiation, um, uh, the deliberation uh, of making sure that the mall got into a, um, a buyer's hands. Goodwin said the city's efforts to revitalize Slack Plaza and the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center should attract a buyer. We did what we believed was necessary, which was to tie up all of the loose ends that were left to make sure that we could get that mall on the market. The listing boasts location and amenities. It doesn't, however, include the four anchor properties or the mall parking garages. That's because J.C. Penney owns its property, and Cova Insurance owns the former Montgomery Ward building, the former Sears property is owned by a hotel developer, and the former Macy's building is now owned by Cura. Cura's executive director says it is available to anyone interested in buying the mall. All agree there's a lot riding on the mall's future. It's uh, the anchor, if you will, for this portion of downtown Charleston. 
Commercial property broker Howard Swint is concerned for the city's future. All the hotels and parking garages and office buildings that are in adjacent blocks will have their values negatively impacted should the town center go dark. The impact, however, goes much farther. The mall generates more than a million dollars a year in property taxes, funding, among other things, schools. In 2019, the mall generated $1.3 million in tax revenue. In 2020, amid the pandemic, that figure dropped by more than $300,000. While the future is uncertain, the organization that promotes the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center believes the area still has a lot to offer. That used to be the experience. You would come to Charleston, you would go see, say, Disney on Ice at the Coliseum. You would go to the mall and shop and then go get dinner somewhere. Um, so, again, the mall is a component uh, of that Charleston experience. But I do want to emphasize that even without the mall, we've got a thriving dining and, and shopping scene here in downtown Charleston that's just a couple of blocks away. The reality, however, faced by many malls, adapt to survive. What you'll see is shopping malls trying to cater towards, um, you know, uh, you know, experience type opportunities for consumers as opposed to just the traditional retail, you know, here's a bunch of merchandise and we're just trying to sell it to you. It'll be more like experiences. We asked people on Facebook what they would like to see. We got lots of ideas. An ice rink, Olympic sized pool, an outdoor mall like Easton and Columbus, indoor amusement park, and an aquatic center, just to name a few. In the meantime, current mall tenants hold on. The ones that are inside the mall, I feel for them. I feel for them, I really do. I think that the, the, the malls will survive. I, I don't think it's realistic to think that they're, gonna, they're going to go completely away. And we have reached out to the mall's ownership group and Charleston Town Center management for comment on this story, but we haven't heard back from either. You can find more information about the financial impact of the Charleston Town Center on the surrounding area on our website, WCHSTV.com. Reporting in Charleston, Anthony Kahn, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Anthony. Also exclusively on our website right now, you can watch an extended interview with the mayor where she talks about the challenges and parameters the task force faced. You can also watch our stories from the time the town center was being built to the opening day to the days immediately following that opening.